Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, December the 8th, 2012. Our topic today is Featured Teacher, and our special guest is Karen Lirenden. I know that uh, Karen has way too much to offer us today, but you're going to enjoy every single minute of uh, the sharing that she has for us, and that you'll really understand why we selected Karen today be our Featured Teacher. Before we get into this session, I do want to thank uh, Lori Moffitt for helping us moderate today. Kim Case is uh, our regular moderator with me, and Peggy George, who is our expert typist in the chat, is uh, enjoying an event with Steve Hargan on in Phoenix called Hack Your Education. So she said she was going to try to get in on the iPad, but she is really busy organizing that event today, and we miss her tremendously. But um, everyone has the opportunity to take other professional development during the day. And thank you in the chat to Tammy Moore who provides closed captioning. So if English is not your first language, if you know someone who has a hearing impairment, uh, you'll see the op option with CC available at the top window uh, in audio video and you'll be able to click on that and watch Tammy type away throughout the whole session. Let's get started and talk about how we help you and take all that information that Karen has to share. Some of you already know that we have a live binder and thank you Kim for dropping the link into the chat. This is a page that will take you to, through all the resources that Karen is offering today and if you have links that you drop in the chat that are appropriate to the session, they will also be uh, added here in the live binder as well as we do have a website live.classroom20.com and we point you always to the archives and resources page because you'll also find all the links there as well and we'll add your links into the blog post. We have the complete Blackboard Collaborate recording. That means you'll see everything that goes on during the session. We also have the MP3 audio file that you can do an RSS feed and catch it on your iPod or iPod Touch. As well, we have an MP4 file embedded in the page so that if you wanted to take this session and share it in a professional development um, way with people on your staff or other people you want to know, you can actually post it in another blog or HTML page to, to use. So I think that's about the archives and resources and getting to know uh, how we sort out the information. It's now time for, I said, you're going to put you to work and I'm going to ask you to look for the laser pointer on the left-hand side of your whiteboard and here's your time to Click, click on the, the icon, drag it over to the map, some people are very proficient, and then let it go. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. Both Karen and I are Canadians and Karen is out there in Surrey, BC. If you can't make those little icons work, then guess what? Use the chat and let us know where you are. I know out there in Thailand is uh, Shambles Guru. Virginia, I think you're in Italy. Thank you very much for being with us. We see you often. Warm Orlando. It's kind of rainy and miserable here in St. Catharines today with about uh, five or six Celsius. No snow though. I wondered if Virginia, is there snow in Italy? I thought one of my elephant, my relatives had taken a picture of snow, but it, I could be wrong. That's a lot of fun. It's great to see the connections we have across the world. I'm going to move on now to the poll question. So this is a rem reminder that. The polling option is just below your name on the right hand. Just click it on it. Check green for yes and X red for no. Do you have access to iPads to use with your students? That's our question today and people are uh, voting away here. Wait a little bit and then I'm going to let you see the results. I think most people have had a chance to vote and uh, here's the results. Um, more people do not have access than do and a fair number have not been able to uh, use the chat function but they're giving us answers in the chat. On to our next poll question which is have you used Skype or Google Hangout with your class? Green check if you say yes, red X if it's a no. Just wait for the votes to come in. Most people who are voting, I think they've taken a chance to vote, and let's look at the results. Not many people are using Google Hangout with their classes, and some have used Skype, but most have not. 
Thank you. Let's move to the next question, which is, have your students worked on projects with students outside of their own classroom and school? I think we'll have more people saying yes than no in this section, but go ahead and vote, and I'll post the results in just a second. I think we're 50-50, if I'm looking at the numbers here, the people are voting, 50% uh, of the people are voting are, are or are not, so we got an unusual split there. I'm sure they'll be sharing why they are not in the chat as we go through the session. So thanks everybody for voting. We're now going to move on to uh, our presentation today. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you Karen Lurman. We first met the Unplugged.ca event here in August and I had the greatest joy of learning all the great things that Karen's doing in her in her classroom and it's why I asked her to be a special guest with us today. She uh, teaches uh, ESL K-7, to she has anyway, in kindergarten uh, K-1 to split in grade 1. She's also taught in her 21st year in Australia. I'm wrong. She, this is her 21st year of teaching and in 2009, three years ago, she taught in Melbourne, Australia. And I know that her experiences uh, actually help her prove that uh, she fosters independent learning through a caring and supportive environment. And uh, she really lets, she tells me she really lets her young learners do the same thing at the same time. She feels that social emotional learning including self-regulation is an integral part of her classroom. In 2011, she made a conscious decision in, to bring technology into the hands of her students. And in October, she borrowed her district's class set of iPods but needed help to turn them on. So I think this is a great story she has to share with them. And I'm going to let her continue and um, give you a sense of what happened after that. I am going to turn uh, the mic over to you now, Karen, and thank you very much for being with us today. She's done tremendous work in getting ready for today, and I, I know it, every minute's been worth it. So we ask you as a feature teacher to answer this new big question, if you could. What does Web 2.0 mean to you, and why do you use Web 2.0 tools in your classroom? So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Lorna. Um, and hello to everybody else. Um, what does Web 2.0 tools mean to me, and why do I use it in my classroom? Um, Web 2.0 tools sort of took the internet from um, telling me what I needed to do with it to me telling what I wanted it to do for me. So Web 2.0 Web 2 tools just sort of opened up the world to creativity and it allowed me to be in control of my learning or my students to be in control of my learning instead of a website, like a drill and practice type website, to be in control of what they're doing. It just totally um, there's so many different tools and they all allow the user to, to actually dictate how the tool gets used, not the tool dictating how we use it. So it, which is a huge, a huge deal. Um, I am going to start my presentation and I've named it um, Jumping into the Digital World with Both Feet. Uh, the reason why I've done this is because I literally, and I'll start my story, actually I'll start with who I am. Um, I'm a grade one teacher in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. I grew up in Vancouver, I lived here my whole life. Um, I did teach here in, in Melbourne, as I said. Um, I'm a five-time Ironman finisher, which is something that most people don't actually know about me. Um, I love to travel. I love to run, though I don't run as much as I used to, but I do love to run. Um, so there's pictures of me here in Korea, in Australia. There's one on the bottom corner is me in Thailand. Um, so what's my story? In July 2011, uh, my former vice principal, Tia Hendrickson, was sending me these emails and saying, Karen, you need to get on Twitter. And I'm like, Tia, I don't need to get on Twitter. I don't have time to get on Twitter. Twitter's not for me. And she kept sending me links and she started sending me links of people's blogs and I'm like, all right, I'll take it. I'll take a little look. So in 2011 in July, I joined Twitter. And my life has never been the same since then. Um, within the first 10 days, I found out about a free live online conference called the RSCon or the Reform Symposium, and they had workshops going on all day and and all night because it was global. And one of the workshops I, I went into was being put on by a teacher named Aviva Dunsinger, who at the time was a grade one, two teacher in Ontario. 
and it was about using technology in a, in a primary classroom. And I had always thought I was good at using technology because, I mean, we went to the lab and we did word processing and we used kids' picks and, you know, there were some great drill and practice apps that we would use, or um, websites we would use online. But it wasn't until I went into Aviva's um, workshop that I was like, oh my goodness, there are so many more things we could be doing. Like, I am barely doing anything with my class technologically. And so I made a real effort um, to get to know. And one of the things with joining Twitter is you're so overwhelmed. There's so many amazing things happening. And so I um, went out of my way to start up a blog. And so there's a little link to my blog, um, which I'll maybe show a little bit later, or the link, the link is there if you want to take a peek at it. Because it was just way too overwhelming for me, and I needed a place to put down my ideas. So it's quite funny, My the post, the picture there is actually my very first blog, which you might want to read because it's my journey is being quite incredible. So it's just funny where I started whenever I go back. Um, so from there, I got on Twitter and I started to get to know a little bit about some hashtags. And I somehow met these two teachers from Australia, um, from Adelaide, Jackie Nelson and Leanne Kohlenberg. And Jackie and Leanne were both blogging with their students. They had class blogs. And I never, I'd had a class website before, but I never really had a class blog. And I was curious with all the different things that they were doing. So I sort of followed them and I thought, well, if they can do a blog, I probably can too. And so we would chit chat back and forth. They'd put up a new Web 2.0 tool. I'm like, oh, I like that. Then so I'd add it. And so I set up a class blog, but I couldn't do anything with it because I didn't have any students. Um, if you notice the bottom picture in the bottom corner, that's actually um, Jackie and I meeting face to face this summer. She's on Exchange in Canada right now. So it's pretty cool because um, Jackie and Leanne were really big on getting me blogging with my class. And so just the fact that we got to meet was, was pretty awesome. Um, but then there was even more. I got um, involved with First Chat probably August of 2011, um, where I met amazing educators, all teaching grade one. And one of the people that I met was Kathy Cassidy. Well, Kathy, I mean, I was checking on her blog, and it wasn't until school started, and as soon as school started, I noticed in her class blog that her students were blogging. Never in a million years would I have thought I would have had my grade one students blogging, but I thought, wow, Kathy's kids are blogging. I need to look into this. So immediately I looked into this, and then I found um, Kid Blog, where I ended up setting up our own our own blogs. But I mean, I've learned so many things from Kathy. She's always three steps, I think, ahead of me, and so it's so she's been a huge part of my journey in this is this year. So just bear that in mind. So with that, my kids started blogging, and then in came the technology. And I think my staff must have thought I was nuts because. As soon as we got back in September, I started signing out laptops for my class to use. Um, and I signed them out before, but I would never send them out until term three, because we do have a district set of laptops, or uh, I guess a school set of laptops that are available. Um, they, we got a couple of new laptops, and they're trying to get rid of some of our old laptops. And I'm like, no, 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 I want them in my room, I want them in my room, I want them in my room. And so I pulled in any technology I could find just to get my kids online more. Um, I booked any free lab time that was available, and I found ways to use the lab um, to use Web 2.0 tools with my kids. I, as I said, I signed out the district's iPod set, and it, I literally did not know how to turn them on when I started. Um, I had to get someone in to show me how do we turn these on. So, um, and then I actually bought my own iPod, and I don't know if you can see the picture on the bottom. Um, that's six kids reading one story on one iPod. So we made it work with the little technology that we had, and it wasn't about, oh, I can't because I don't have this, or I can't because I don't have that. It's, I have this, what can I do with what I have? Um, and that was really important. Um, in November, I was approached by someone in my district because they had seen what I was doing and they really wanted to get an iPad into my hands, into my class. And so I was sent for training with a grade, with a high school actually. Um, and I managed to get an iPad into my class. And once that iPad ended up in my classroom, it was used all day, every day, nonstop. And it wasn't so much about um, being fair that everyone got it at this, you know, for a specific thing. Everyone got it when they really to me when they really needed it. It was shared. It was, um, if there was someone like the picture in the bottom corner, is that's one of my little girls using the Word Wizard app um, to help her with her writing. At that time, that's what she needed. And she needed more than somebody else needed it. So it's all about need and, and people use things when they, they needed it. The kids that didn't have internet access at home, they were more likely to get to use it to do some blogging on it. So it, it, we didn't limit because we only had one. We used the best of what we could with what we had. And then with all this new technology, things in my classroom totally started to change. Um, I started exploring Web 2.0 tools because prior to getting on Twitter, I had no idea what a Web 2.0 tool was. And I just thought the internet was something that you did. It told you what to do. Um, but with a Web 2.0 tool, you tell it what to do. And so some of the tools that we explored 
include Wordle. And so Wordle makes word clouds. Um, we did brainstorming um, with our little, with our big buddies, and we talked about how we were same and how we were different. And we made Wordles about that. Um, AudioBoo we use a fair bit, uh, and AudioBoo is what's nice about it. It's web-based, but it's also an app, and it's a recording tool. And so I use it often to record my kids um, with their reading, or my kids have used it sometimes to do a podcast. So if they want to share some other things, they can use, um, they can record on on AudioBoo, and then we can put that recording onto their blogs. Um, Voiki was a lot of fun. Uh, we did that with our buddies as well too, originally, and we talked about, we wrote about ourselves. And so what a Voiki does is it creates an avatar that you can make speak, and you can choose how you want it to look, and you can choose um, what you want it to say, and it'll actually say in the voice that you choose what you ask it to say. Um, Draws it we used when we wanted to start, we, my kids wanted to add pictures to their blogs, and so Draws it is a great Web 2.0 tool that allows you to actually draw, and then you get an embedding code, which you then can dump on, put onto a, into a blog. Um, Animoto, I use more so than my kids independently, and we used it with a lot of our photos. We'd make movies, and my kids just, I mean, because they, they make really professional-looking movies, but really all you have to do is upload pictures. Um, and there is a free account for teachers, so if you just look on Animoto, you can, if you just look a little bit for educators, there is a way to get it for free, and the options are pretty good. Um, Crocodile, we just learned about this year, and what Crocodile is, it's a voice recording tool, and so when you go into the Crocodile website, you you can record voice, and that voice will, um, you get a link to save that voice, and so what we did with Crocodile, which actually linked to QR codes, is that we uh, were doing a global project with some kids in Manhattan, and we had, for the global read aloud, and we had a flat Stanley project, and we took pictures of us with our flat Stanleys, and we took them home, and we brought them back to school, and instead of just sending pictures or doing writing with the pictures, we decided we wanted to send them voice. So we all talked about our pictures, recorded it in Crocodile one at a time, and then took the link that we got from Crocodile and sent it to um, the QR code creator, where we created QR codes. So when we sent our pictures to Manhattan, it was our pictures with a QR code that linked back to our voices talking about our pictures. Um, we haven't done a lot with QR codes yet. My plan was to um, have my entire library linked by QR codes, and so if the book they wanted to read wasn't available, that they could scan it and go online and find it. But the reality is not that many authors are actually reading their stories, so it was a bit, we're not, not going to do it, but it's a bit, it wasn't as good as I was hoping. Um, Storybird was another one that we explored last year. And what, what's cool about Storybird is you select art that is already there. Um, and a, there's a ton and ton of different art. And then you can create books um, from the art that you selected, so you can add writing. So again, it would be a tool that we started with our big buddies. But then as we got more independent, um, we could, my students would go independently and create their own stories using Storybird. Um, and that's one of the things, a lot of the stuff when it's new, we often use our big buddies to help us figure stuff out. Um, I kind of have what I call the gray hair factor. So if it's something that my kids can't do independently, or and I need to do it all, and it gives me gray hairs, then it's probably something that we shouldn't be doing. If I can find ways to get the big kids to help us learn it, then we'll start that way. Um, but it's amazing what they can do when they're told or with, with support. And I find as soon as three or four of the kids can do it independently, then more and more of them can do it independently. And then all of a sudden, my gray hairs are appearing less and less often, which is awesome. I'll keep going. Um, so the thing is, with the introduction of increased technology into my classroom, it did not replace the good teaching that, I was, ar that was already happening. It just added to it. And so I'm going to show you a video. Now, this video I actually made. Um, for my district, um, and, it, and what it will do is it will show you some of the ways that we do learning without technology, but then with technology, what else we can also do. But, it, but what I want to stress is that technology has not replaced the hands-on stuff, because that to me is still super, super important, um, and, it, and it should be. I've got young learners, and the hands-on, that is super important. So hopefully I can do this right. I'm going to, and if I don't.
I'm just going to suggest that people who have not seen it, um, we're going to move on and close out the web tour because I think it's a bit difficult. Great, thanks. And I did turn your mic off. Okay, great. Okay. Um, okay, so I apologize to those of you that didn't weren't able to see the video. Um, what the video does is it takes through um, some of the things like my kids will write in a journal, but when they write in a journal, the only people that read it are myself and maybe their parents and maybe their classmates. Um, but when they write on a blog, the entire world can see it. And that um, and and so the, the video just sort of goes on how we used to, we do this, but with technology we're able to do this. So if you get a chance to take a look at it, I I recommend it. Um, it just sort of makes you think of the different ways that you can do things that you maybe not hadn't thought about with technology. Um, so with that, um, blogging really did become a big part of my, my teaching and my classroom. Um, and, and last year we really only had access to the, to the blogs when we were in our lab, so once or twice a week. And um, this year we have a few more iPads available to us so we can actually blog a little more often. But, but blogging was sort of, um, it just opened our world up to the amazing things that we can do online and, and, and it opened up our connections and, and what we can do with other people. So as I said, my connections became big for me, be became big for me through Twitter, but they also became big for my class and because I realized how powerful being connected was for me as a, as a learner and a teacher and I wanted my kids to feel the same way. So we started a, we started a class Twitter account and we um, tweet at, at Miss L's class. Um, we don't tweet all the time, and I find we tend to tweet when something big has happened that we want to share with the world, or we'll often tweet with specific classes about specific things um, as a way to communicate back and forth. And it's funny because Kathy Cass and I, we, my class did a blog post about ways to show 10, and one of her students left us a comment on our blog that said, oh, do you know any other ways to show 10? And so we wrote back and we said, yes, we know many ways to show 10, but we didn't know when they'd get back to our blog, so we thought we better tweet them so they know that we wrote them back. So we tweeted them, and then they tweeted us, and they commented back, and it just came back and forth and back and forth. Um, so Twitter is kind of like our direct line to direct people if we're not sure if they're going to get um, back to our class or not. Um, we joined a, a wiki about growing plants, um, planting seeds, and it was pretty cool because there was about, I don't know, 15 classes that were doing the same thing at the same time, and so we could see whose seeds were growing more quickly than ours, and did, it, did the climate or the place that they were located or where to put the seeds, did that change how fast their seeds were growing and how fast their seeds weren't growing? We joined quad blogging, and quad blogging is where you, um, if you go to quadblogging.net and you sign up, they put you with three other classes that are similar age to you in other parts of the world. And so my class, um, each week one of the four blogs are the focus, and so one week my class is the focus, and then the other three classes all come and visit us and leave us comments. Um, and so then the following week another class is the class focus, and so the other three classes go and visit them and leave them comments. And so it's a way to bring more traffic to your blog, and it just let my kids learn a little bit more about other classes. One of the classes we blogged with last year, they had a big spaceship land on their on their playground, and there was slime, and there was all this species. So needless to say, my kids are like, can we go back and see what's happening? Can we go back and see what's happening? So they were, they were pretty excited about that. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, the flat classroom. There was a pilot project last year for K-3, to and it was um, building bridges. And we were in a, a sharing a meal um, group. And in our group, we ended up cooking. I've got a very multi-ethnic class, and so I invited my parents. I thought, I, I don't just want to share globally, but I want to see if we can get my parents involved. So I invited the parents of my students in, and we um, cooked. And so we made different ethnic dishes, and then we shared all of our recipes with two other classes, one in Hong Kong and one in Chicago, outside of Chicago and Illinois. And we um, shared, and we communicated with them. We made a voice search together with them. We made the things that they made in Hong Kong, and we made the things that they made in um, Illinois, and we and it was just a really neat way to connect our classes to other classes. And we skyped with them, and we met with them, um, and it was and it was pretty cool. And along the way, I got to meet a whole bunch of amazing teachers as well. So where are we now? Um, this year, we're connecting globally even more than before. Um, I think about this week, we were supposed to Skype three times to Google Hangout once. One of our Skypes was, was changed for next week, but that sort of is a pretty typical week for Skyping at least two or three times a week. Um, we're blogging regularly. And now that KidBlog has an app for the iPad, 
are, are instead of me adding all their work to their blogs, my kids can now much more independently add their work to their blogs. So our blogs are slowly becoming our digital portfolios. Um, we're utilizing technology that's available to us to meet our individual needs. And as I said, I've always not looked at what I don't have access to, but what I have access to. This year I'm really fortunate and I've got quite a bit of access to technology. That access could be gone at the end of the year. And so um, for me it's all about just making the most of what you have and, and doing what you can with what you have and not so much worrying about what you don't have. Um, so this year how are we connecting? So I guess quite interesting. Um, I decided that I wanted to take part in the Global Read Aloud this year, and I've never done it before. And so what it is is they offer two books, and as a primary teacher, I chose the primary book, which is Charlotte's Web. And originally I thought, okay, we're going to read this story, and maybe we'll connect with a couple of people while we read it. And it kind of grew a little bit out of control, but not in a bad way. So originally it was just Mrs. Whiteen and I in Ontario. We had our kids Skyping um, together, and we were talking about making predictions on, on what we thought Charlotte's Web was going to be about and what, what we thought might happen. Um, from there, we wanted to go a little bit further, so we ended up having a Google Hangout, and we invited two teachers locally in my district, as well as uh, Kristen Whiting in Ontario. And the, and the four of us, we met once a week, and we shared a chapter of the story, and we'd ask each other questions. Uh, we went a little bit further with my class, and as I said, we connected with a class in Manhattan. And with them, they don't have a blog, um, and they don't tweet, and so we did a more of a traditional project where we did, like I said, the, the Thought Wilbers, and we shared them with them and we Skype with them. But what's interesting about that connection is while all this was going on, that's when the storm happened, um, Storm Sandy or the Hurricane Sandy, and it affected our friends in Manhattan. And so it was amazing how this one little connection over, you know, a little story in the Global Read Aloud, all of a sudden we were concerned about the storm, we were concerned about our friends, and we actually lost contact with them for 10 days. Um, but then they were fine and we could ask them some questions. And so it was really cool to be able to have that connection. And we wouldn't have had that without taking part in a project outside of our own classroom. Um, we also worked with a class in northern Manitoba where we created a voice thread. So my kids drew pictures of their favorite um, parts of Charlotte's Web and or the favorite characters in Charlotte's Web and her class, um, Mrs. Fisher's class did the same and we've commented on each other's through a voice thread. Now voice thread is an iPad app but it's also a web 2.0 tool so it's available to anyone that has internet access. Um, we also did a Skype call with Mrs. Tomasetti's class in Toledo, Ohio where we talked about our favorite parts. Um, of Global Read Aloud, I mean of Charlotte's Web. We Skype, like I said, we Skype a fair bit and we Skype for various reasons and I would say if you're going to add one thing and your, your internet works and allows you to do this in your school is, is get onto Skype because with Skype you can do so many things. It can take 50 minutes of your time and then you can get on and that's what I find as a grade one teacher is my kids are good to Skype for 15 occasionally a bit longer, but when we go much longer than that, they get squirrely and then it's just not fair to them, and it's not fair to me, and it's really not that productive. Um, so we Skyped, we Skyped as a class in Northern DC about what peace means to us around Remembrance Day. We Skyped, um, we helped out in a class in Ontario, they were doing data a collection for math, and we helped them with, we provided them with the data, they asked us questions, we answered. Um, we've actually had a teacher from South Africa Skype into our classroom to teach us the math. Um, we Skyped, uh, with Mrs. Cassidy's class, we we noticed that on her blog they had put the kids had made a video about um, what they think they're going to be for Halloween, and they acted they used drama to show their Halloween costumes. And my class wanted to do that as well, so we skyped back and forth trying to guess each other's Halloween costumes. Um, we skyped for a variety of reasons, and they're, they're endless. And so, I mean, we could skype every single day on something, and we always have a purpose for our skypes, and we always have a reason why we're skyping, and that's really really important. Um, we are quad blogging again this year, like we did last year. This year we have two classes in England and a class in um, New Zealand. Um, we've taken part, or we're taking part in the primary blogging community, which was set up by Kristen Whiteen. Um, and what that was is in October, the same thing like regular blogging, but we actually were just coming on each other's class blogs. Each week there was a feature teacher, I mean a feature class blog. And then, um, but come January, we're actually going to start blog commenting on our students' individual blogs. Um, so it's sort of, and, and we're supposed to Skype and meet. We haven't yet, but we might, hopefully, um, before Christmas time. But it, but it's just a different way. And it was really just primary teachers that were interested um, in in the quad blog type situation. Um, we've done Google Hangout. Like I said, we use it with the Global Read Aloud. And Google Hangout is great when you want more than one class um, to, t to take part. Um, at the moment, in my district, we're doing something with the gingerbread man. We have a gingerbread man that started at one elementary school. And 
he ran away, surprisingly enough, he left a big mess, ran away, and showed up in another elementary school in another grade one classroom in our district. Um, he's since run away yet again, and he's actually in my school at the moment. And so myself and two other grade one teachers and our classes were taking really good care of them to hope, so hopefully they won't run away, but we're not really sure. So we use Google Hangout, we meet once a week, and we share a gingerbread man story, and we talk about where he is and what he's been up to and the tricks and things we're doing to keep him safe. Um, and the original class is like, please send him back to us. We miss him. Please send him back. So Google Hangout has been really awesome for that. All right. Um, so we do have two blogs, um, and I'm going to try as best as I can to show you our class blog just quickly. Um, Um, so this is my class blog, and I'm not I'm not going to, hopefully you can get it. Um, can just someone let me know if you see it or not in the chat? Anybody? Um, I'll, I'll keep going. So I'll just, I'll talk about just the different tabs. I'm not going to open any of the tabs, but I will just quickly talk about them. Um, our About Division 18 tab, the first one on the top, that's just where we talk about who's in our class. Um, visitor etiquette is pretty important for me. That is where we talk about how to be safe on our blog, and you know, and certain things that I do, like I will never put a, a put I have faces, I have pictures of my kids' faces on our blogs, um, all with permission. But I never ever match a link to, I mean, a, a name to a face. Um, when I ask my parents to, to comment, to try to keep last names off of their comments, just to be general, like I'm so and so's mother, or just first names. I do have an anonymous option for, for for commenting, and I teach my kids and their parents how to use that so that you don't have to sign in with, it, with anything. You can just write your name at the bottom of your comment and, and select the anonymous option, and then I, we can still get your comments. I moderate everything. Any comment that goes up, any post that goes up has always gone through me. Um, our why do I learn, why, we, why do we learn online section, if you get a chance, you might want to take a look at that. That's where I share why we're doing what we're doing, and our biggest thing is, is the biggest reason why we do everything is the connection and learning from from each other. And by having an open blog where comments are allowed, we actually get so much more information from other people. People learn from us, we learn from other people. Um, our individual blogs, that link takes you directly to our individual blogs. Um, every week we do Word Words, so I post them up there. Our class calendar, if something's happening in our class. Oh, thanks, those are our individual blogs. Um, and you can see what they look like. Um, every student has has a blog, so I'm just going to choose. Oh, okay. Um, I'll I'll take you back to our individual blogs. Um, every student in my class has their own, so I'll just pick one student in particular. Um, my kids have all set up their own blogs to look how they want. And so my students are now posting work that they want, um, how they want it. Um, they can post their different, their different types of work onto their individual blogs. So I highly recommend you go and take a, a peek at those. Um, I'm going to go back to the slides. And so how is technology fitting in right now? Uh, technology allowing my students to make their own choices with their learning. Um, technology is allowing my students to document their learning in ways that suit them best, and it's allowing my students to share their learning in ways that are best for them. So I'm going to do a quick run through of some of the things we're using with technology. I know my time is somewhat short, but uh, hopefully we can get this done. Uh, my students have choices with their word work, and that's really key in my classroom. My kids have choice on pretty much everything that they do. If they can find a way to show me what they know um, in a way that works for them that I haven't thought about, I'm all for it. And I always let them know this is what I want to see from you and how you choose to do it is your choice. But of course I have to teach them a variety of choices. So some of the ways that we use our word work, um, some of the apps that we like to use is Word Wizard. Uh, word Wizard is a fabulous app because what it does is it will make the sounds of a, um, of, of a letter. So for example, I have a student who has a lot of trouble, um, he doesn't know his letter sounds very well. And so when we go to writing, I'll say I want you to write um, a story. and 
here's an, an outright star, draw a picture. And with this picture, I'll say, okay, so what did you draw me? He says, well, I draw a limousine. I said, perfect. So let's use the Word Wizard app and see if we can find the, the little letter. And so I said, so you're listening for the letter that says little. So he goes and touches every single letter until he finds the one that makes the sound he wants. Well, slowly we do that for every letter, and he's written the word. And when he gets his word written, he's like, I did that? And I said, well, yeah, you found all the right letters. And so the Word Wizard app has been fabulous. It's also good because when you, if you're reading and you're not sure of about a word and you've tried and you've tried, if you pull out the Word Wizard app and you touch the different letters, it'll actually read, if you put the letters on, it'll read the letters for you. Um, magnetic, ABC, um, it's just like regular magnet letters, um, but my kids seem to enjoy using those. Just, I mean, for that is, I, I would say that's sort of a fun factor app because they, it's not, that creative, but it is another way that they like to practice their word wall words. Um, TouchWord is great. It allows me to put in um, our weekly word wall words, and so and it helps them practice and actually make the letters properly. Um, Draw stars is another fun one. Doodle buddy, dictionary, or do, doodle buddy. These are all ones that just allow different ways to practice our word wall words, um, and they all seem to find different ways to use them to make them work for them. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't want to cough in your ear. Um, some of the more open-ended ones, like Pictionary, what that does is has a string of letters, and your kids have to make letters, um, words with the letters that they see. Uh, Rocket Scholar just helps with spelling, and Sight Word Bingo we tend to use when we're on a bit of a sight word kick, and we want to practice our sight words to see if we can do them, can do them or not. I'll uh, move on. We do a lot of things without um, our iPads, and so I think it's really important my kids like to use the letter beads, they like to use their letter stamps, they like to use their letter tiles. Um, we have lots of stickers in our class. The whiteboards are really popular. We use them for a lot of things. Uh, rainbow writing where they write with different colored tools, uh, pipe cleaner words, and processing. So they're actually rolling out letters. Uh, with pipe cleaners, there's no picture there, but we have uh, somehow we ordered a lot of pipe cleaners in my school. And so we will cut them up and we'll actually bend them to make the letters and the kids like that and and they can take them home so they kind of like that as well um, moving on we have lots of choices with their writing um, some of our more popular apps are my story book creator kid blog comic life draw and tell and word wizard um, my story is great because what it is it is allows you to draw a story it allows you to speak to your story and it allows you to add text to your story and when you're done you get a book that you can share um, on your iReader, <coughs> sorry, you can share on your iReader or in, in iBooks, and then other people can read the stories that you made. Uh, Book Creator was great. We tend to use that for nonfiction. So far this year, we've used it. Um, we did a book about places that we learned in our school, and so when we when we have places that we learned in our school, we took iPads and we took pictures of all the places around our school, and then we imported the pictures into Book Creator. Just one second, I'm getting a cough again. Sorry about that. Um, we made a book with our big buddies. Every book is different, and there's so many different features that they can all personalize it how they want. Kidblog um, has recently come out with an app, and I can't speak highly enough about how awesome Kidblog is and how awesome their app has become with the Kidblog app. Anything my kids make on an iPad, they can um, either take a screenshot, so that picture would be saved into their photo album, or they can just save it to photos. Anything that's saved in photos, whether it's a video or a picture, an image, can be uploaded to KidBlog. Um, so now my kids, I want to put this on the blog. I'm like, if you don't know, you can do it. Um, they're uploading. And so, and like I said earlier, their blogs have now gone from just places where they're sharing their writing to actually places where um, they're, they're becoming digital portfolios and they're making choices of what they want to show the world in terms of their learning. And it's been, it's just, it's so powerful and it's easy. I mean, are my kids all independent at this stage? No, not yet. Um, but are we getting closer and closer every day? For certain. And it's amazing. And they are so proud. They're like, look, it's on my blog. I did it. It's on my blog. And so it's, so KidBlog's been really great. It's a great way for them um, to share. And in terms of their parents, you know, my the parents, if they aren't, aren't able to get into the classroom, they can at least see their kid blogs and they can see what um, they've been up to based on what is showing up on their blogs. Um, which has been really great. Comic Life we haven't used yet, but it's a great um, comic creating tool. 
excuse me, tool that's easy for my grade ones to use. Um, Draw and Tell is probably by far one of my favorite apps. We use it for everything. Um, we use it to anything we make non-digitally. We'll take a photo of it and we'll bring it into Draw and Tell where we can talk about it. And what's cool about Draw and Tell is it's a drawing tool, so you can use it as just a drawing tool. Um, it's a recording tool, so you can use it to record stories. It um, has stickers, and if you use those stickers, you can actually retell a story and just move the stickers around them, and they'll move around the screen as you talk. Um, but if it's just a non-digital picture, when you talk about stuff, if you actually touch the screen as you record, a pointer shows up. Um, and so you can see what you're, you can, the kids can actually point to exactly what they're talking about. And that's all innate. It's a really early primary friendly app. Um, it isn't free, but it's definitely worth um, everything. And Word Wizard, again, I've talked about that. That's the one where the, it makes the letter sounds for you. And it, when you put your letters together, it actually reads the letters for you. Um, some of the non-digital stuff my kids use with their writing. My kids love, um, they'll write on anything, and in our writing time, they can write with whatever, wherever. They'll write on chart paper, they'll write on whiteboards, they'll write in our journal, they'll write on paper. They have a writing draft book if they want to actually work on something, um, but they, more than likely, they're, they're writing on, on blank papers, and they just keep all their papers in their folders. Um, they write all different types of things. I never tell them what to write, and um, we do a lot of mini lessons. Um, so they've got all the tools, but in terms of where they want to go with their writing, most of the time they have full choice on that, and it's, and it's good. And whether they want digital or not, that's also their choice. Um, some of the math that we like, again, Draw and Tell is huge. We'll do something non-digitally or digitally in another app. We'll bring it into Draw and Tell, and we'll talk about the math that we did, and we've done a lot of that. And if you check out their kid blogs, um, you'll see a lot of information. A lot of them, sh they're sharing their math using the Draw and Tell app. Um, the Tim's Frame. We, we like um, in terms of numbers and ever since this, the hundreds chart we've used over and over and over again. Uh, we did it in the beginning with counting. We rolled a dice and we would cover the hundreds chart. Uh, we've done it with different ways to show 10. We've done it um, for patterns. We've done it for tons and tons of things. Uh, Skitch is another app that we totally love because it um, you can label anything and everything. You can take a picture of something, label anything and everything. Um, education we've used a fair bit, and it's an, it's an open whiteboard app, and I'll talk quickly about some of those in just a, a second. Um, but it allows you to, to draw your, your learning and talk about it as you go. And it, what, what's nice about education is it allows you to do more than one page at a time. And it also, when you're done, it will give you an embedding code. So it will automatically copy the embedding code once you push the proper buttons, and then the kids can head to their app, I mean, to, the, to their blog, to kid blog, touch their screen, paste the code, label it, title it, and their stuff is up on their blog. So it's really, really easy to use. Um, we use our camera a lot as well. Um, never underestimate the power of a camera, an iPad camera, a regular camera, to document learning. We're looking for things, um, finding ideas of number 10 in our classroom. Um, so we looked around, took pictures of sets of 10 or sets of 3, and created movies in iMovie with that. So really easy to use. Um, lots of hands-on stuff in terms of math. I'll just quickly, um, we use math placement a lot, which is too bad it's not here, but it's definitely on our kid blogs at the moment. Um, we use hand math, a lot of hands-on math. Um, it's, we're not all digital, for certain at all. Um, so moving forward, um, my students have the choices of documenting their learning. So I talked a little bit about Sketch. So this top picture is actually Sketch, and so it's a picture of non-digital work uh, where my kids have labeled it um, and then, and so that they can share it that way. Um, we use ScreenTromp and Show Me. ScreenTromp, Show Me, and Education are all similar whiteboard tools. They all work slightly differently, so you need to find one that works the best for you based on what the job that you want to do. Um, we quite like, um, like I said, in Education we've been using. Last year when we were doing science, we were using ScreenTromp and Show Me. So you can see there's a little picture of a girl drawing um, the life cycle of a frog, and she can draw and talk to it as she goes. Um, collage is great if you want to take a bunch of pictures and make a collage. It's really um, user friendly, particularly at early primary, they can do it without any trouble. Puppet Light is great for a webbing tool, and you can upload pictures and they can link. We haven't used it yet this year, but I know when we get into nonfiction, it'll definitely be used a lot more often. Like I said, we use the iPad camera quite a bit. Um, we're always taking photos, um, and they they're really cute. If they want something on the blog that's not digital, I'm I'm going to take a photo. I said go for it. Um, we use the iMovie or they use the camera, the movie feature. The, camera for math, and we acted out um, math word problems. Um, and so it's just, it's unlimited what you can do. And I mean, I could have thrown a million links up here, but I highly recommend that you check either the, my kids' blogs or our class blog, and you'll find some of the different ways. 
We used iMovie around Halloween when we were talking about acting out our costumes. I had two kids who wanted to make a movie like Mrs. Cassidy's class did. So they actually had a class list. They asked all the kids. <laughs> they filmed them doing their movies, and they created an opening scene using Drawing Pal. They put the whole movie together. They chose their music, and that movie went up on our blog. So it's really easy, um, the things that they can do. We have a lot of non-digital things, and it's never you're never forced to be digital. Um, there's lots of non-digital ways. Um, to get to do things in our classroom as well. And the kids, just, they have choice. They can decide how they want it to show their learning. Um, in terms of sharing their learning, and I will be fast, um, like I said, KidBlog is huge. We use it all the time. Sketch is another really great one for sharing learning. And the thing that's cool about Sketch is it saves automatically now to Evernote. So if you've got an Evernote account, I just make sure <laughs> when my kids are using Sketch that they put their name on their work. And then when they save it, it saves to Evernote. Well, I get Evernote on any device that I own. And each of my students have a folder, and I can then transfer their work to their folder. And I can share that with their parents. Um, we use Dropbox a lot as well. I've got my iPad set up such that anything they save to photos shows up in our class Dropbox account. And so what that means is that I can go from anywhere from home, I can open it up, and I can see what they've been doing. Um, I don't have to go and check individually each iPad. Um, I can, and I can access all their stuff from my one Dropbox account, our class Dropbox account. Um, what was cool is when we did the we did a project with sharing our our um, what we see in our schoolyard. Every child had an iPad that they were taking photos of. All the photos showed up in Dropbox. We pulled up the Dropbox. We took a look at all the photos, and we chose the ones we wanted um, for the actual movie. And so that was cool. And we share a lot of stuff just on our iPad photos. So if people want to come in and see what we're doing, we can just take a look at our iPad photo album, and we can see from there. So I think I'm just about wrapped up. Um, so I guess the thing is, I know I've talked a lot, and that seems to be my style. I have lots to share, and time is limited. Um, so I guess what I want you guys to think about is what small change from today will you take away with you, and what might you want to explore further? Um, because I know I've, I've bombarded with a bunch of stuff, and I could have talked probably for another four hours, um, but that's not reality. And so just sort of think about, if I said something today that will make you maybe try to do something different, um, that would be awesome. And here is a little bit about me, um, where to find me. I did forget, I think, what did I forget on here? Um, oh, in, in terms of Google Plus or Google Hangout, my Google name, this is my misslayerman at gmail.com is where to find me, but my actual Google Plus, it's Miss L is my, no, Miss K is my first name, and my last name is Learman. So if you're looking for me in Google+, Plus, it's Miss K is the first name, and Learman is the second name. So I think, um, hopefully that, that helps. Um, I guess the last bit, I'll leave this slide up, but my last slide is just if you have any questions, um, I am more than willing to answer or help with. I didn't see any questions other than um, there was a question about is there a size of the images or the videos a size limit when uploading to kids blogs? They do have a they they kid blog does have a limit. Um, we have been uploading somewhat regularly, and we I think we've maybe used maybe twenty percent of our limit. I think it's five hundred, whatever the the term is, megabyte or gigabyte, I don't, I don't know that kind of stuff. Um, they do, it is say it if you go in your control panel, it will actually say what your limit is and what you have. But I know that Matt at KidLog has been, he may not want me to say this, but he's been really good. Like last year I thought I was going to hit my limit early, and he ended up uploading, uh, increasing my limit, and he, and this year the limits are just bigger to begin with. So while there is a limit, I think with the right um, chat, or the right conversations with Matt, and you can find him at, at kidlog.org. Um, they they are open to negotiations. Yes. And there's a question about um, where do you recommend somebody start if they're brand new to using iPads and apps? Um, if you're brand new, figure out I guess first of all what one thing you would love to be able to do because there's so many things you can do with them. Um, I always think I mean start with you want to just play and get your hands dirty, play with some of the apps. A lot of the open-ended creative apps, like, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Draw and Tell um, because you can draw with it, you can write with it, you can record with it. I mean, when you choose your paper in the beginning of the app, you can actually choose the interline paper that we use to write on, 
and my kids can use their fingers to write, which they, they think is quite funny. Um, they can then read what they've written. Um, we've used Rontel for patterning. We've used Rontel for storytelling. We've used Rontel just to document our learning. It's a really, really fabulous app. Um, a lot of the open-ended ones, so the show me, the screenshot, all of those, um, you get a blank screen like a whiteboard and the kids can, can show their learning on it that way. Um, but yeah, to get your hands onto one and just to play is, is really, really helpful. Um, and I, I agree, like, yeah. And decide what your purpose is and yeah, where why. you want to go. Mm -hmm. I did have, an. I think it's on my contact paper there, um, the handles by Wiki. I uh, handles by Karen at wikispaces.com. I've done presentations on iPads and on um, blogging and on using Twitter. And so anything, whenever I find a link that, that's been posted on Twitter, I try to add it to that wiki. So that might be a good place if you're just starting out with iPads. There's a lot of, um, I put some, a, bu a bunch of discussion, um, suggestions on there. And most of them haven't come from me. They've come from other amazing educators doing amazing things. But I, but I did sort of try to pool stuff together. Um, so if, if blogging is something that you're interested in, or using Twitter is something you're interested in, or um, having iPads and dealing with the reality of iPads, then those are all things that you, that, that's a place where you may want to go as a starting place for resources. I think I this has been so fantastic. Are there any other questions that we might have missed? Lori, did you capture any questions? I did capture a couple, Kim. Great. Um, maybe you've already said this, but how many iPads do you have access to in your classroom? Um, I do have access to one for every student. Okay. But, but that isn't probably forever. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the reality is I think if I had six, I could do anything and everything. When I had one, we still did a ton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, when you're doing the Skype or Google Chat or anything directly connected to the internet. What happens? What do you do when you have a, a bad internet connection during the beginning of that activity? Um, we have bad internet connections all the time. My kids know that is a reality. We get dropped out mm -hmm. of things. Um, we can't get in, and we just we just learn deal, start again, and hope that mm -hmm. we can get through. Sometimes we can't get through, and sometimes it ends up getting, you know, we head onto Twitter and we send the class that we're working with a little message saying we can't, it's not working today. I mean, just on Thursday, we were chatting with um, Angie Harrison's class in Ontario, and they couldn't get on Skype. We could not connect with each other. So we left little messages through Skype, and, and I just said, okay, we'll leave our Skype on. We're going to start blogging about this experience that we're having right now, um, mm -hmm. and then We'll leave it on, and when you're able um, to get on with us, we'll come back, or we'll come back and we track. And so probably about 20 minutes later, all of a sudden, we see that we can get back on, and then we just stopped what we were doing, and we rejoined the group. So it's about being flexible and being able to run with um, what's happening. I mean, it happens all the time. That is the reality of using technology. It's sure. going to work all the time. Sure. That's great. Uh, those are the only questions that I captured that Kim did not ask, so I don't have any others. Give me out of time. Yeah, it's not always a waste of time. It just, it de like she said, depends on what your time constraints are. Yeah, it's never a waste of time because, I mean, if if anything else, it teaches my students that when things don't work, that we don't have to get all flustered about it, and that we can, yes, acknowledge it doesn't work, and then move on and move forward. So I totally um, would disagree that it's a waste of time. I mean, because it, you're still learning something else. Um, when things don't work, and it's being able to and see what you're learning in that environment or that situation. And do you assign homework that they have to do online? Never. I didn't. I didn't I, think so. No, not not my style. Um, I do have many, many, many of my students are blogging from home, um, but it's completely and totally optional. I mean, I had kids all last summer blogging, um, not because I told them to, but because they want to. And I really, um, it's all about self motivation. It's all about internal motivation. I am not. Um, I don't tell, I mean, in, in terms of like writing, word work, math, they're showing me what they know. I'm not the one um, telling them how to do what they need to do. It's all up to them. And they, and I mean, and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversation, and that's where we sort of set our goals, and that's where we set um, the specific things. So if I have a student who's writing simple sentences, and I know that they can be doing more, 
that kind of stuff will come up in a conference and I'll say, okay, well, you know, you're doing great here, but what can we do to improve and together we'll come up with goals. And ultimately, I mean, I'm the teacher, I have to push them forward, um, but I want them to feel like it's actually coming from them. That's a big, that's big. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and uh, formally close out the show and those are Karen's information to contact her. They're also in our live binder if you have additional questions that uh, come up that you would like to um, ask her. And that live binder link is right there. We want to let you know that Steve Hargett on next week, he will be, um, there will be the Edgy Blog Awards. So though anybody who has been nominated, and we were nominated, so um, I don't know if it's too late to vote, but you might want to check into that. But anyway, the EduBlog Awards uh, session in um, Blackboard will be December the 12th at 4 p.m. Pacific and 7 p.m. Eastern, a little earlier than normal for a Steve session. Also, um, December the 13th at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, he will be interviewing Cal Newport. And on December the 18th, he will be talking to Adam Fry. And Adam Fry was the one who uh, was one of the founders of uh, Wikispaces. And then in January, he'll be talking with David Risher. So those are great interviews that you'll want to stay tuned in for, for with Steve Hargan on. And that's where Peggy is right now. If you missed that at the beginning, she's um, with a workshop with him. And we want to let you know that next Saturday, at the same time, we will be talking about um, bringing your um, own technology and technology on demand. This is um, They have a chat as well, and this is going to be a great group that's going to be joining us next week with some fantastic information. It's going to be a great way to finish out our year on a high note. Um, as with all of our sessions each and every week. And then we won't have any uh, sessions on the 22nd and the 29th for the Christmas and um, New Year's holidays, but we will resume on January the 5th for an end of year celebration. It'll be our, oh, I can't remember, third or fourth year of doing this. And so we have some exciting things planned, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that as well. We love to have your feedback, and if you'd like to nominate an educator for a future teacher session like Karen's today, that's the link, and the link is also in our live binders, so you can submit that at any time. You can also submit the information on our survey that will open automatically in your browser, and the link is in the uh, live binder as well, and we'd love to hear what you thought of today's show as well as future topics or guests for um, any show that we do in the future. And you can also request a professional development certificate for today's session in the survey. Just in that X section, just put your name and email address, and we'll get that out to you in the next coming days or so. Peggy takes care of that, so give us a bit of time, and we'll get that right out to your email. That link is also in the Live Binders link, as well as the link to our iTunes U channel where you can subscribe to the MP3 of each session or the MP4. As, and you can also subscribe through an RSS feed aggregator by clicking on our blog post on the Archives and Resources page. And you can uh, get the, all of the resources that way as well, and the chat log and those kinds of information that are shared throughout this session. We want to give a very special thank you to Karen and to Steve Hargadon, who is our founder and creator of our webinar series here, and to Weebly and to each of you who participated in the session today and shared your links, comments, and questions each and every link with us. And we're very grateful for our special guests and for each of you that attend our sessions as well as you are recording. 
And anytime you do a recording, if you fill out the survey link, you can also request the professional development for that recording that you want. Just indicate the session title as well as your name and email address. And then you can, Peggy will send you a certificate for watching that recording. We want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today, and we look forward to meeting again with you next Saturday when we talk about um, another fast-paced topic that's um, in demand about your own bringing your own technology into the classroom environment. So thank you, everybody. Have a great Saturday in Hanukkah and holiday shopping and all of the plans that you have. Thank you so much for being with us, and we will see you next Saturday before we break for the end of the year, and that will be our final session for the year. So take care, everybody. Have a great Saturday and a great weekend, and we hope to see you online next week.